Hello, hello. This is a quick overview of the auto sizing feature and how it interacts with variable text in data merge. So let's go over some of the basics of what auto sizing is. Under normal circumstances, if you create a text field, it will retain its height and width regardless of whatever text you have, uh, which can result in overset text errors if the text is uh, too great to fit within the bounds of that text frame. So what auto sizing does uh, is automatically adjust the height and width of that text frame to match the content that's uh, within it rather than the other way around. So uh, let's talk about how to get to this. Uh, I usually just hit command B to bring up the text frame options. Um, and uh, that's just out of habit for me. Uh, I, I recommend that you uh, also get uh, accustomed to using hotkeys like this. So. Uh, I just hit Command B and I bring up the text frame options. Um, there's a bunch of stuff here that you can mess around with, but for now, let's focus on auto sizing. Uh, you can see that on this text field, I have auto sizing turned on with height and width and key proportions. There's a number of other options here. I'll, I'll talk about those in a moment, but for now, let's focus on this. Uh, I've also set it to have a minimum height of 30 millimeters and a minimum width of 30 millimeters. So let's hit OK and uh, start toggling through some of the text that comes from our spreadsheet. Uh, you can see that depending on the amount of text that I have um, uh, feeding in from the spreadsheet, the height and width of this text frame is now changing automatically. And I'm not having to mess with any of it. It's, it's uh, doing it on its own. Uh, this makes it uh, pretty nice and uh, easy to uh, adjust uh, your settings and your, and your layout to, to fit whatever content you have and, uh, have it predictably be centered or anchored into a particular place um, as you wish. Uh, there's a number of other options that you have with auto sizing and I have a second page here that uh, shows you uh, some of the uh, wacky options you have here and how they might interact with each other. So this is page two uh, and you can see it's, it's a bit noisy so let's focus on one thing at a time here. Um, let's uh, say uh, we want to focus on this text frame. So let's, let's, everything else, let's delete it. Okay, so on this text frame alone, I've got an auto sizing uh, set up uh, for the height and width, uh, and I have it set to uh, anchor to the top left corner so that whatever content uh, starts filling this text frame, uh, it's going to fit the height and it's going to uh, fit the text field um, with that uh, content, uh, and it will adjust the height and width accordingly. Um, but um, the issue is that it's kind of unpredictable because it, it, it all relies on the original width and, uh, and sometimes the original height of the uh, text frame. In this case, the, uh, the text frame was rather narrow, so it's not really adjusting appropriately, I don't think. Um, so uh, you can see that the, uh, it, it's just going to keep on being tall and skinny because that was relatively the, the original proportions that I had. Um, so if I wanted to uh, fix that, I would go to the settings, go to auto sizing, and I would say height only. Um, and, uh, and then I have some options here for anchoring to the top, to the center, or to the bottom. I'm going to keep it anchored to the top. Um, and, uh, and now I can more independently control the width, um, and thus the height automatically changes depending on uh, how the text flows within that frame. If I toggle through a couple of the other uh, records in this spreadsheet, you can see that the, uh, the width is re remaining constant, but the height is uh, varied here. Uh, so I have a bunch of other options turned on on the other uh, text fields that I had earlier. So let's take a look at those as well. Um, let's see, let's turn off this one and let's widen this one. Oh, I can't do that because I've got other text fields. So this is another thing that you might run into as you start messing around with auto sizing. Uh, it'll start fighting you a little bit. Um, say you had height and width turned on, it's, it's not gonna let you adjust the height and width of that text frame because it has some overriding features uh, turned on. So um, I'm gonna turn those off for the time being as I make adjustments, and then I can turn them back on when I'm uh, satisfied with the overall size. So I've got this, uh, I've got this window over here on the bottom left corner working out as I wish. Um, let's say I wanted to do the same here. I turn off the auto sizing and 
adjust the width there to say around there and I want to get the height there that'll change of course as I start making some adjustments uh, oh I turn off the auto sizing on this field so turning that off and again adjusting the height turning off auto sizing on this to adjust the height and width as well and let's lower that down okay now we can start messing around with some stuff here. So uh, let's turn auto sizing back on for this. Um, I'm gonna anchor it to the top right um, and only adjust the height. I'm not going to adjust the width. I want this to remain the same width regardless of whatever uh, text is in there. Um, and I'm not setting a minimum height either. I can if I wanted to so that the minimum height could be say for example 25 millimeters uh, if I wanted to, but um, yeah, sure, why not? Again, turning on auto sizing uh, height only. Oh, and I want to anchor that to the, okay, yes, and it is, uh, it's only going to change the height, not the width. Cool. Auto sizing, again, height only, and it's anchored to the bottom. I want to double check this auto sizing. I just want to make sure, yes, it's anchored to the center. This middle one, I'm wanting to anchor to the bottom, height only, cool. And this one, auto sizing turned on height only anchor to the bottom cool. uh, the reason I'm anchoring to the left or to the right or to the bottom is to ensure that whatever content gets filled into these text frames it won't go outside the page it will always fill towards the center of the page um, and this one has I think the original settings I had yes uh, the height and width so the minimum height and width is 30 millimeters um, and it'll start uh, filling in with whatever content comes from the spreadsheet uh, and keep the relative proportions that it had originally. So let's start toggling through our records and see what this does. You can see uh, as I toggle through here, the sizes are changing as, as we expected. Uh, regardless of whatever content uh, starts filling these text frames, it's filling towards the center as I had instructed it to do. Uh, this one, the height and width is not changing as much as I expected. I believe it's because I have a minimum width, yes. Uh, so let's turn off the minimum width and keep on previewing uh, pages in the spreadsheet. Yep, that seems to be working. I think I have another situation here where, yep, another minimum width or height rather. Um, if for whatever reason you want to have a, um, a variable width but not a variable height, uh, this is what that would look like. So I'm going to choose this text frame to be our guinea pig here. Uh, I will set to width only and it will be anchored to the left edge uh, I'm not going to give it a minimum width so let's zoom in a little bit and see how that interacts as I go through this oh boy wow that width is getting pretty wide uh, you can see where this gets a little bit unpredictable as uh, if you have multiple text fields on the same page uh, that all have their own auto sizing turned on you have to be careful about them overlapping each other too much accidentally um, so uh, just watch out for that. Um, for the most part, I think this is a, a useful tool uh, if you need to have a, a background behind your text, but you can't predict uh, how much text is going to be there. Um, if it's on a busy background, like this cloudy texture uh, here, uh, if you didn't have a background, the text would be too hard to read. And so I think it's useful to uh, have this auto sizing function uh, in your repertoire so that you can make adjustments automatically without having to manually adjust the background for every instance um, uh, of a text field that, uh, that may come up in your document, whether it's a card game or a brochure or a mail or what have you. Um, but um, yeah, so hopefully this is a useful tool for you. Uh, I hope you have fun with it. If you have any cool tips for how to get the most out of it, I'm happy to hear it. Um, so until next time, thanks, bye.